This module is a deep dive into wing design. How wings create lifts, how they take their shape, why size matters, how we create wings that are safer and more efficient, how wings are tested for safety, power attack systems, speed bars, and more. This is honestly one of my favorite things to talk about. There is so much to go into. This, this might run a little long, so let's get started with it. We talked a little bit in wing terms about paragliders. They're essentially an inflatable airfoil. But what is an airfoil and how is lift actually created? Well, an airfoil has two basic principles that are creating lift. You have the downward deflection of air and Bernoulli's principle. The downward deflection of air is really easy to visualize. We can again use the example of sticking our hand out the window of a car and pitching it up. We'd experience some lift on our hand. This is because our hand is deflecting air downwards and there is an equal and opposite reaction to that deflected air down pushing the wing up. Now Bernoulli's principle is a little bit more complicated. The first aircraft, like the Wright Flyer, had completely flat wings. As we get into the airfoil shape, it gets a little bit more complicated. An airfoil is a shape that's generally round in the front and more or less flat on the bottom with a curved upper surface and all of this tapers to a point at the trailing edge. The shape of this causes the oncoming air to split. Some air goes across the bottom and some air goes across the top of the wing. Because of the distance from the leading edge to the trailing edge is longer on the top due to the curve than it is on the bottom, the air traveling over the top is accelerated and has to move faster over the top. Bernoulli's principle states that fluids moving at a higher velocity will exert less pressure on the surface around them. So this shape actually makes a low pressure area on the top of the airfoil. So not only is an airfoil deflecting air downwards and pushing itself up, it's also creating a low pressure area above the wing, sucking the wing up as well. We can see a dramatic example of this low pressure zone in action if we look at a fighter jet making a steep minimum radius turn. We see a cloud forms on the top of the wing. This is because the pressure is so low on the top of the wing that water vapor in the air actually begins to condense into a cloud. On a paramotor, we really wouldn't be going that fast to make a cloud, but the principle remains the same. Let's first dispel another myth. A paraglider and a parachute are two very different things. A parachute is built very strong, very thick, and very simply. It's designed to be opened at or near terminal velocity, which for a person is around 120 miles an hour, and withstand the shock loading from that opening. It's not designed for glide performance. It's designed for strength and reliability. They have very little cells, it's a very inefficient design, and their glide ratio is pretty poor. A paraglider is not designed for terminal openings. It's designed to be launched from the ground. It's a much more refined and re efficient design that prioritizes performance in glide ratios, sink rates, and speed over general durability for falling out of an airplane. They kind of look the same. It's a piece of nylon with strings underneath it that you hang from, but aside from the general shape, the similarities end there. However, both work on the function of ram air. Ram air is the concept that keeps paragliders and parachutes inflated. As they're moving forward through the air, cell openings in the leading edge of the wing are gathering air and filling the wing full. Once the wing is full, the air pressure that the wing is experiencing from its forward movement through the air is constantly pushing on the air inside, keeping a constant pressure inside, inflating its shape, and keeping its form. Now let's get into the fun stuff. To see the rest of this over 37 minute wing design discussion along with 39 other modules just like this, visit vimeo.com slash on demand slash paramotor 101 to begin your paramotor learning journey today.